So the pillars of the Houston economy <coughs> are the oil and gas and derivatives market, manufacturing, port, Texas medical. <coughs> The drivers of the boom, on the other hand, are oil and gas derivatives, manufacturing as it's related to oil and gas derivatives, and the port as it's related to oil and gas derivatives. Okay. So the Texas Medical Center is growing fast, but at least that's what all the reports are saying right now. Um, NASA plays a big part of their economy, um, but what, eight years ago or so, whenever they shut down the shuttle program, that was a big hit on NASA. Um, and so that was, it was taking a lot of the employment growth away from Houston. Um, and then a couple of years ago, they reauthorized the new heavy lift program. Um, and so the next kind of take NASA for the Houston area. And now it's in trouble again in uh, Congress, um, the funding for NASA. So um, the federal government is highly unreliable source to base your growth on. Um, <laughs> people talk a lot about the Texas Medical Center. Um, so typically when you talk about medical services, um, they're primarily a local service um, so that you go there um, and you pay your doctor to get you well, right? <clears throat> and so they're not really a driver of growth of the economy. They are the oil in the machine, right? If we didn't have our doctors, we'd all die and there'd be no use. Um, but they're not, typically they don't <coughs> contribute to the growth. The medical center is different. It's a highly concentrated um, <clears throat> focus of medical employment, brings us highly skilled doctors who are at the top of their field um, in many different uh, aspects of medicine, and we have the medical center and a focus of research. And so the Texas Medical Center does bring in a lot of money from outside of the region and acts as a driver of Houston area economy. Um, unfortunately, nobody really knows how big that effect is. I mean, we just know it's big. Um, and so the uh, Institute for Regional Forecasting is actually participating in a study where we will try to measure um, the impact of Texas Medical Center. And then the third thing that we've grayed out here is the Panama Canal. Um, and so the Panama Canal is going to have an impact on the Houston economy. It is not going to have as big of an impact as um, the most uh, hyperbolic uh, supporters have been saying. Um, initially, when you when I first started reading reports about, <coughs> or guesstimates, about how the Panama Canal was going to affect Houston, essentially they were saying that all imports to the United States are going to come to Houston now because we're in the center of the country and it's easier to uh, export out of Houston to the rest of the U.S. country. No. Um, and so then I have a source who can't be quoted, unfortunately, uh, but I trust them. And basically, when we see the Panama Canal open, what we can expect to see is we'll see some marginal uh, logistics changes where there will be some slight additional benefits that were almost about to come to Houston anyways will come a little bit faster. Um, but not the sea change as you might have heard in a lot of reports. <coughs> It'll also help with our oil and gas and derivatives. Right? It'll make some of the exports um, for new products that we're making out of our natural gas and light crude. Um, <coughs> Uh, cheaper to transport to China and, and, and to Asia. Um, and so it will have this marginal beneficial effect, but not as, not as great as in the craziest stories that you read about how it's going to impact everything. All right, so oil and gas and derivatives have been driving the latest boom, and it's been a big boom and a good boom, as Mr. Riley has said. And so we've heard this before. And so I want to look at a second and compare what happened in, 19, in the 80s to what has been happening recently. So that's what, so in layman, like on, on um, a lot of the websites and, and where I get a lot of my information, a lot of the, the laymen who have really no economic experience or even really involved in any of the major industries here in Houston keep com comparing this uh, recent time period to the 1980s. <coughs> and we'll see that that's not necessarily, not really out. Because if you look up here, up here on uh, the top, it's 1980s. All the way at the far left, I normalized the cost of oil and the number of rigs in the United States market to one in October of 78. 
And you can see that <coughs> we had a much larger price spike between 78 and 82, and we had more recently. So as the price of oil went up by, in, in nominal terms, four times, whereas in real terms, um, about once and a half again. And the rate counts followed that. And so the key difference in the 80s, though, is that in 82, the oil prices leveled out. And so they paused at $40 a barrel, which would be $110 today. And <coughs> the rigs collapsed. And so that all of the development in the early 80s in the upstream, in the upstream market was predicated on <coughs> continuously and forever increasing oil prices. Right, so which is a particular brand of stupid. Um, and so we, with just the pausing oil prices, we see the collapse in the rigs. And then it levels out for four years and we'll get back to what's going to happen in 86. Whereas here now, we had a, this is actually a faster rate of increase <coughs> for the early 2000s. And then we had the bulk of risk, or sorry, the financial recession where we saw oil prices collapse. And so then the rig count went down on the same scale, it fell in half. In the 80s it had doubled and it fell back to where it was. In early, <coughs> in 2008 or 9, mm -hmm. the rig count fell from 2,000 to less than 1,000. So the rig counts fell in half. So right there it's looking like it's going to be the 80s. And if the oil prices had stayed down at $40 a barrel there, we might have seen another 80. But the oil prices came back up and the rig counts responded but there's been no real increase in the upstream size of the market. We, 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 said we, all, we started in 2007, we had 1,700 rigs. I think the latest rate count is about 1,900. And so that we've been pretty low. And so prices, the rig, the search for oil and natural gas has been responding to actual prices instead of responding to these, these unreasonable beliefs about prices. That they're going to continue forever. Right? That's when you always know that you're probably just about to see a crash. It's when, you, when people start talking about how prices for whatever you're building or in selling are going to go up forever. And you get an unreasonable view. But this slide is what really shows us why people are comparing it to the 80s. And so that before, <clears throat> between 1977 and 1983, we added about a million people a little bit under a million people. And then between, for so the past seven years, between 2007, or 2006 and 2014, we added about a million people. All right, but it looks, so it looks kind of the same. This is why all the people are talking about. The difference is, is in 77, we had 2.3 million people. In 2006, we had 5.4 million people. And so that this million person increase in in the end, 1983 represented a 32% increase in the population over what it was in 1977. Whereas over the past seven years, we've only added 18. So we've added, the rate of growth is about half of what it has been. So it's having a smaller impact on the Houston economy as a whole. And then also, so then after the oil bus, we then, <coughs> leveled out for a few years, and then we hit the oil glut. And then we had our real estate bust. And part of the real estate bust here, which is also the warning to us that are interested in the construction industry, was that as population growth started falling, in 1982 we added 200,000 people, which we had not matched, which we almost matched in 2006. And we added, we permitted 75,000 housing. So that's single family, two and four family, and five plus family apartments. And then when our population growth fell by a half, or population growth fell by a half to 100,000, then our permitting only fell by 10, to 65,000. And then when our population was growing by only 17, we still permitted 32,000 houses. 
So a big contributing factor, we were still going to bust anyway. But a big contributing factor was this over construction after growth rates started to fall. 